When I expanded the CNC machine, which I showed in the video from last week, I had to move the lathe just a little bit to the west, which I guess in this view is to the right. And in doing that, I had to rearrange the lathe area to be able to move the lathe. And it gave me a chance to set it up in a different way that's possibly better, but at least different. And it forced me to hook the lathe up with a switch instead of plugging it in to turn it on and off. So in rearranging the space, one of the things I did was to move the bandsaw away from the lathe and over with the other small stationary tools. Now it's on wheels, but it still takes some manhandling to move. But I managed to get it over to its new home. And I moved the sharpening grinder just a little bit. As part of the move, I had to get it out of the way. Now the reason for moving the bandsaw and the grinder is so that I can move this cabinet. It can't be along the wall under the window because it's in the way of moving the lathe. So I'm going to move it over to the wall under the big door. And I'm going to move the cabinet that's hanging on the wall onto that wall as well. And in doing that, the tool holder that's attached to the top of the floor cabinet has to move because it doesn't fit under the cabinet that hangs on the wall. But I think this is going to lead to a better setup. I stopped moving the floor cabinet at this point and I had to move the cabinet on the wall. In moving it over to that wall, there's a little strip of the French cleat that isn't installed yet. So I needed to make that little piece. And this isn't going to be there to hang anything on. It's just a spacer for the cabinet so that the cabinet hangs vertically. So I just need to make the little foot and a half or so that, that's needed in that corner. Then the wall cabinet can be put in place. And it doesn't quite fit on this little section of wall but it should be okay. It overhangs the door just a little bit, but it really made sense over on that wall. Then I can move the cabinet over, and I put the tool holder on the cabinet on the other end from where it was. I think this really needs to be back here. This doesn't, because now there's this big space back here that's just gonna get full of sawdust and junk. So what I think I want to do is I'll make a little, I'll find a scrap piece of wood, attach all these two, and then just move all this back there. And then, I don't know what happens in the front here, it'll probably get covered with clutter, but I don't know, that seems like a better way to do it. And then this thing as well isn't attached, so I can pick it up and move it to clean behind it and in it as it gets filled with chips from the lathe. Once that was in place, I could move the grinder into its position. I think it'll be sort of next to the tools. And after this, I can finally move the lathe. <laughs> so my adjustable cart will actually pick up the lathe and I can move it with that. And I've wanted to raise the lathe up just a little bit. I'm just a hair over six feet tall. And I think having the lathe at its regular height is just a little bit low. So I'm going to try putting it up on some concrete pavers and see how that feels. And I've realized now after using the lathe that my outboard turning stand may have to also be up on pavers. I haven't tried it yet to see if it works sitting on the floor with the lathe raised up. <sighs> Now when I moved the lathe, the plug no longer reached the outlet on the wall. So what I want to, I, I sort of moved the lathe here and just plugged it in and I've been using it. And what I really need to do is buy a switch and hardwire this into the wall. And then when I want to turn the lathe on, I just turn the switch on instead of plugging the lathe in, which really isn't the way to do it. So what I need to do is get into the wall and do a little wiring. Turn off the power. <laughs>
Now, when I designed the shop, the idea was that the lower foot of the wall was where all of the electrical would be. So I can remove that bottom panel and get at the wiring. Now, when I started this thought process, I was going to put a junction box under the lathe here at the, the leg. And the thought was to mount a piece of plywood to the leg. To the piece of plywood, I could mount a junction box. So I need to fit a piece of plywood into the leg of the lathe, then bolt it to the threaded holes that are in the leg. So I traced the shape that I needed on a piece of paper. Then I scored those lines into a scrap piece of plywood. And I could cut that out on the bandsaw. Then I brought that piece back and clamped it in place. Now that it fits in the lathe, I thought I could scribe the edge and make the shape of it a little cleaner and a little closer to the shape of the leg. Then once I had that, I could recut that shape and be a little more careful with the cuts. Then the last thing to do was to mark the holes that I was going to need to drill for the threaded holes in the leg. I drilled four holes as there were four holes in the leg of the lathe, but it ended up working out where I only used two of them. And I sanded the cuts that I had made. And I cut the bottom off the shape that I had made, because I really didn't need that. And that piece is now done. So I worked on the wiring and the wall, and I added a box to split the 220 line that I was going to need for the lathe switch. And I made a cover plate for that box, and I needed a hole in the front of it for the wire to come out. I'm thinking now maybe I put an actual outlet here and a plug so that I can plug and unplug the lathe when I need to move it. But for now, I wired it directly into the wall. And this is the box for the switch. And I knocked out the holes to bring the wires in. So I'm going to bring the wire from the lathe into the top and the wire from the wall in through the bottom. When I was originally thinking about this, I was thinking I would put a junction box on that piece of plywood that I made, then have the switch on the wall. But what I decided would be simpler is to have the switch on the lathe and not do the junction box, then have the wire go from the switch up to the wall. And doing it this way is simpler, but it means that I have to bend down to turn the switch on and off, which I'm hoping isn't going to be a big deal. Now, there's a, not a whole lot of wiring documentation on this switch. I did it how I thought it should work, and I just used two of the three connection points on the switch for the single-phase power that I'm feeding it, and it seems to work. So I got it all wired up, up above, where I could work on it, and then I mounted the whole thing under the lathe. And these bolts that hold the plywood on are, are a huge overkill, but that's the size of the threading in the lathe leg. So that's what I had to use. <laughs> so they're giant 5 8 inch bolts to hold up a switch. Now I need to put the panel back on the wall, and I've added the junction box for the lathe and a new outlet. So I needed to cut two new holes in this panel. So I can draw where they go, then drill a hole to start the jigsaw. Then cut out the rectangle with the jigsaw. And it actually fit on the first try, which is rare. <laughs> so I can put it back on and just screw it back into place. And it's a lot easier than digging through drywall. And I can put the cover plate on the junction box and attach the wire from the lathe. And turn the power back on. And it seems to be on. 
The outlets are on a different circuit. And the lathe seems to work. Now I started a little wood turning project just to kind of end this video and to kind of show that the lathe's working and to get a sense of the, the new height of the lathe, which I like better at this taller height. And I like the tools and the sharpener being behind me while I'm turning. They feel closer and more accessible and yet out of the way. So I like this setup. It's a little bit like a galley kitchen. <laughs> This wood turning project now feels like a real project and it needs its own video. So I'm thinking I'll stop this story and just make it about the lathe move. And hopefully the next video, if all goes well, will be about this little wood turning project. Thanks for watching.